one summer morning, we both just had this vision and this uh, inspiration. Could we actually do this for a living? Every morning that I get up, I cannot wait to come out here and see new growth, what's happening. It, it excites me. I mean, I, I learn so much every day. You know, if you care for the land and the plant and the soil, it gives back. I started the farm. It was really Ashley's idea, my wife. She had wanted to have a like, little garden so she could do some canning. You know, when she was a little girl, she did some canning from the little family garden. I think she wanted that kind of same she had fond memories from, from that time of her life. There was something that we both fell in love with on growing food, connecting to the soil, and seeing plants react to your decisions, to your care or lack of care. It, it, it really captured us both. Our vision was small market farming, not, not, not big cornfields or cows, just small market farm that our family could tend and we could grow enough for our family and have enough to sell where I didn't have to go and work. So with that dream was more of this quest of, okay, we kind of know what we want to do. Now, how do we make this happen? We had no money, nothing, no money, no experience, but we did have a vision and a desire to make a go of it. We were not afraid of failure. At that point, we had Asha, who was six months old. It was our first one. We wanted to have uh, quite a few children, and I didn't want to take 20 years to figure this out. That's when I began seeking out other growers, kind of went out of state and, and was able to find uh, a mentor to help kind of guide me through the first year or two. That first year I did just one tunnel and then I did a small plot. And I was working nights uh, welding. Early mornings I would work a little plot, which was a complete disaster and failure from the first year. We had no idea how fast weeds can grow here in, in Monterey County. My first year was like the hottest summer. It was a brutal, it was 2010. It was one of the hottest years on record. So then the second year we took our mistakes. We really analyzed what went well. So we tried to do more of those things. And then what failed and we asked ourselves, can we do better? If so, how do we do that? And if we don't have any ideas, then let's, let's not do that again. The first year, because we didn't produce that much, we sold everything that we could grow. But then the second year, we probably grew three times as much. We quickly learned, hey, we could actually grow a good amount of produce, but we're really struggling selling this. We, we really had to be creative with, hey, we, we have some unusual veggies here. We gotta find an unusual way to sell this. So one of our passions was, you know, here we're growing this bounty, we're eating this, but we wanna share it with others. So we decided to, in the fall, we would have a feast in the field. All of our current CSA members, we would invite them out and we would cook them a big meal. And I would give them a tour of the farm, kind of show them what we've been up to for that season. I mean, every year we must have doubled or tripled our CSA size. Their children would come and see like, oh, that's where our broccoli's been growing. Well, that's what the lettuce looks like grown in the field. It was really a light bulb moment for a lot of these families because this was the first time they've ever set foot on a farm. You know, we've been so disconnected from where our food comes that a lot of these families were just, they were really touched by having access to a working farm, to see the people who were tending the earth and to see 
the, the food that they were gonna eat next week growing. There has been a major lack of education in our system about food. What kind of food? Where does it come from? How is it grown? You know, the earth wants to give us more than we have any idea, but it needs, it needs us to cater for it. There's a whole underworld under our feet that no one can see that's alive and they're communicating to each other. The microbes are communicating to the roots of the plants and the plants are communicating to each other. Humans, we don't even understand, not even 1% of what goes on under our feet. I would venture to say that we know more about space than we do our soil. The more that I treat our soil with respect and care and observe and just study it, smell it, it's very humbling. There's something ancient and sacred in our soil that has really captured me. It's a mystery that very few people understand, and I'm not one of them. When I see what agriculture has done for the past 40 years, where we basically have raped and pillaged our soils, and look where it's gotten us. I mean, our country as a whole, the sicknesses and diseases are just rampant. I really see a shift in agriculture right now. I think the industry has come to this point of, the soil is important, the earth is important. We need to take care of her. The question is, how do we do that? That is sustainable to the earth, but it's also financially viable so we can keep growing. Culture today wants to blame farmers, but it's really like they were just kind of answering the call to the peoples was, we want cheap food. And that's what they got them. Farmers, our passion is to feed people. So if the people want something done in a certain way, farmers will respond. Is there a middle road here? And so I think that's what we're doing now. The pendulum swung so far over here, and now we're asking, hey, what's the middle ground? You know, when I look at the future, I, I see a very bright future. I don't think it's getting worse. I think it's getting better. We need more small growers who grow really good food. And those farmers need to care about what they're growing. They need to care about the people that they're feeding. A small town could have 10 of these. A big city could probably have a couple hundred. I mean, we could be 20 to 30 years off, but I see that shift starting to happen. Every American needs to have a small plot, even if it's a pot, tomatoes on the front porch, where they, they have some connection to food. You know, we all came from dust. Our food comes from dust. And having that connection is powerful.